Thank you. It's very exciting to be here. This uh, is my second year in Slash, as usual. It's full of energy, a lot of uh, startups, and um, I'm very excited and honored to be here. Um, I know you guys all, most of you guys uh, want to learn something about being a startup. Um, a quick introduction to myself. Um, I was, before I started We Plus, I was at a private equities business. Um, I worked for a US fund called Colony Capital. I was there for 12 years. Um, so before We Plus, all I do is investing, private equity. Um, I want to talk about a little bit about the evolution of the office space, working environment. I think what prompts the change in our working environments is technology, right? Technology is growing exponentially um, in the last 10, 20 years. And if you look at the world today, it's changing so quickly. If you look at the history of mankind, we take about three, 4,000 years from agriculture society. Industrial revolution takes 200 years. Then we come into the information technology. Since the PC started, which is about 30, 40 years ago, we have mobile, we have internet, we have mobile internet, and today we live in the world of digital. We call it a digital society. The key in this digital society, as we see it, is changing fast. We talk about a lot of passwords today, big data, blockchains, artificial intelligence. What's the implications? What's the implication from our perspective is the future business world is the adventure of unknown. A lot of things we see as, as a, a, a daily life has completely changed. If you look at the, our mobile internet, I would say that's initiated by the introduction of iPhone, right? Which is only about 10 years ago. It completely changed the way we live, the way we work, the way we shop, right? And most importantly, if you look at Facebook, Twitter, those are necessity of our life today. 13 years ago, there's no Facebook. 11 years ago, there's no Twitter. So what what the future will bring to us, we don't know. Because all we see is constantly change. How to survive in that world, real-time data, you know, we always talk about big data. One of the key things is flexibility. If you are a startup, what you need to think about is your business model today versus your business model six months from now, one year from now what will likely to happen to that business model? Are you, are you flexible enough for change? Is your team flexible enough, right? Resilient agility, we don't need to talk about too much about it, we all know. Learning capability, learning from the industry, learning from others. Those are the key things for you to survive. Another big background, which is I'm not showing here, is the coming age of sharing economies. Um, Kevin Kelly, one of the founder of Wire Magazine, he said, today we increase value by sharing. We share experience, we share technology, we share our network, we share spaces. Again, sharing economy is a new phenomenon. If you look at share, we talk about share, I would say eight years ago, you talk about share. Sharing is the only use when you go to a Chinese restaurant, right? Because we share dishes. But today, everywhere you go, we talk about sharing. You talk about Uber. We talk about Airbnb. The gentleman just left. Technology has created disruption to our business. So as a startup, when you think about it, what is your consideration? when you select a working environment for your team. When you have idea, we have one or two guys sitting together in Starbucks and whatever, you put a type, your idea together, you get some fun, funding, you get your angel fund, now you want to start. Where should you start? How do you consider finding your office space? What is a productive and working environment? I think some of the key considerations we have to look at 
cost is important. How much you're willing to pay for your space. Second, I think it's most important thing, flexibility. Again, in a fast change world, flexibility is very valuable. Since I started we Plus two and a half years ago, now we have 55 space. We currently have about 1,500 small to medium company from anywhere from three to 50 people um, working in our platform. In the last two and a half years, I see company go ups and down. A lot of startup came in, five people, six people. In three months time, they have increased the team to 20, 30. Six months later, they have 60 people. So that's something you need to think about. And also I see some of the teams that came in with 50 people. Three months later, they are down to 20 because the environment changed, your idea changed, your business model changed. So flexibility is something you keep in mind when you are a startup. Do I want to invest $100,000, 100,000 euros to remodel an office which fit 10, 20 people? And knowingly, if the business go well, in six months time when you're getting that A round funding or your B round funding, you will probably expand to 50 or 60. And then you need to think about finding a new offices, right? And the 100,000 euro that you invest in renovate the space is sunk. It's a sunk cost. And more important, given the sharing economy phenomenon, networking cooperations with other is very important. So, and then third, fourth con consideration is whether you have access to other resources such as funds, fundings, private equity funds, VC funds. Co-working is not new. The first co-working that, as I know it, started in 1995, which is uh, a hacker space. A group of hackers get together in Berlin. So they call them C-Base. So a group of very talented hackers in the new beginning, the dawn of the internet age, they get together, they set up this space called C-Base. Right? That's the first co-working space that, as we know. In 2005 in Vienna, that's the first regional co-working space chain. They have more than 10 in that area. That's the first one we know that is working as a chain, not individually. Then in 2005, we have London, the hub, which is the first international co-working space, space. Then of course, in 2012, we have WeWork from the United States. Now they are 220, they're $22 billion company. So what is a co-working space? What did it give to you? If you look at that, receptions, events, coffee shops, kitchen, meeting rooms, office space. You sometimes, some of them have gyms, patios, working gyms, social area. So a new working environment, I think, I got the idea from Eric Smith, which is the founder for Google. A productive working environment for innovative society is an environment that encourages communications, encourage people get together from all thought of life, have some sort of bright idea, let them have time, let, let them discuss, right? So encourage communication, force a sense of community and cooperation is the key to productivity. So when we set up our V+, Stylish, energetics, fun, sharing, social. So again, in today's world, working, social, commercial space, the line is getting blurry. This is some of the picture that is in our space. Everyone, we now have 55. Everyone is very different, uh, different, different characters. And most important in a co-working environment for startup, why is it important? It's not just styles, fun, social. More important is the communities. You are working with a lot of people that's just like you, struggle just like you, have a dream just like you, have idea just like you. So connecting with other people, sharing your ideas, 
cooperating. I think those are the things that you're looking for in a today's environment. And we now have three countries, 18 cities, 48. That's just advertising, so we don't have to worry about it. So in conclusions, I leave you with this quote. Don't be in such a rush to figure out everything out. As a startup, you have a lot of uncertainty. Don't worry about it. Embrace the unknown and let your life surprise you. Come to a co-working environment, something with the character, someone working with someone just like you, have ideas just like you, and perhaps you found something for your life that completely changed. Thank you. Thank you so much for this great talk. You can stay on stage because now we're going to follow up with the questions. Yes. An example of how your own company benefit from working in a co-working space. Well, I'm the operator on a co-working space. So our business model is very simple. We get them together. I think there's three dimensions to the business. One is space. How to build a stylish, a, and, and, and characters, and also an environment that encourage people to get together, someone that can fall in love in the, f in the first sight. So style is one thing. So space is first dimension, service that we provided. For startup, what can we provide? We can get you legal advice, tax advice, funding, right? events, social. Those are value-added services that we provide. And thirdly, I think most important for us is incubations and investment. We set up a fund alongside of with our platform, which we invest on some of the company that in this, this, this uh, um, uh, what we call it, we want to call it a creative platform because most of the company that come in to working space are some sort of, they are working in creative business, whether that's computer, gaming, uh, OTOs, design, culture, um, entertainment, so on and so forth. So we selectly invest in some of those. We provide resource um, for them to grow. That's how we benefit. So the co-working space provide additional services such as training programs and external monitoring, uh, mentoring. Yes, selectively, um, we do that. Um, we don't do the training ourselves. We find you a third party. So uh, for WePlus, we invest two incubators. One is in gaming, which is one of the biggest incubators in China. Uh, we also invest in a um, training service, which provide training for management, um, not in technology, but more in business model, um, social aspect of, uh, of the product, um, custom ex experience, um, so we invested two um, incubator or training programs which provide to some of our um, tenants. Do you have experience working in the nature? Does it accelerate creativity? Working in the nature outside of office? You mean, I don't quite understand that question, nature. Um, no, I have no experience working in the nature. How does co-working space tackle the problem that lead for signing while working? Good questions. Um, what we find out is open desk doesn't always work. Open desk works for individual. So if you enter your freelancer, you're only by yourself, then you're fine in an open desk environment. But any company, any startups, that have more than three people, it's better you have a confined offices, okay? So in our space, I say 85% are small offices devoted to small teams, anywhere from five to 20 people, right? So you have small, medium-sized, large offices, right? You have common area, meetings, facilities, coffee shops, gym, which we all share, but when you work, you go back to your little office, so it can help you concentrate. So open desk is only for mobile workers. So let's say that you're Helsinki, now you're in Shanghai, you're traveling, 
you know, eight, ten thousand miles away, and you're by yourself, then as a member of V Plus, you can go to any office in China or in San Francisco, or soon will be in Australia. You can come to the V Plus. You can have an open desk. You can book your meeting rooms. You don't have to t meet your client in Starbucks, right? So open desk only work for mobile workers or individuals. So when you first started, you're only by yourself. You have idea, but you don't have a team yet. You need a space. You want to talk to people. That works. But when you have a team of more than three people, go into office. Airbnb and Uber does not own the house and cars, but the co-working space does rent space so you can grow as fast as them? No, I don't think so. We are not going to be Uber. We are not going to be Airbnb. Because you look at Airbnb and Uber, the model is more of a 2C, to consumer model. I'm a big fan of Airbnb. I think that's a great example of disruption that technology can provide. I mean, Airbnb is, is a, I always use that example because I used to be in a private equity business. We invest, invest in hotels. Um, we are the biggest shareholder. I use, you know, our fund used, that I used to work for is the biggest shareholder for a core uh, hotel. Um, myself was involved in a lot of acquisition. Hotel chains, when you claim an international hotel chain, you need to have 400,000 rooms. Right, 400,000 room is uh, a tipping point. When you have 400,000 room in your hotel chains, it's now I'm an international, well-known hotel chains. It takes Hilton, Marriott, Accord, anywhere from 45 years to about 70 years to accumulate 400,000 rooms. It takes Airbnb six years, right? That's the, in, the, that's the disruption. But for co-working space, we may need to business, so more of a to be type of business model. So we're not going to grow as fast because we can't. We need to manage our growth speed. Um, we have 55 space. Um, we probably will have about 100 in the next two years. And that's about it. Um, we probably could grow to 200, but there's a limit to where you can grow. And depends on how the office space change, how the work environment change, we will change ourselves. Like I said in the beginning, we have to be flexible. Business model has to be flexible. Co-working, as we see it today, will not be the same three years from now. So we need to be prepared for that. I think I have quite time for one more question. What is your expansion plan? Do you have any location in Europe? Yes, we have in our first location open in Helsinki, January of this year. So now we've been here for almost 10 months. Um, my first time to Finland was October last year. And then I came second time as Slash last year. In January, we opened our first location, which is in Cable Factory, Kaplint. Um, we're expanding that space. Uh, we are putting a game theory um, working space in Cable Factory. We're expanding it, and the new space will be for game developers. So all the people that come in, all the startup that came into that space are focused in gaming. So that's another direction co-working um, space will go. It's vertical, vertical space. And there's no better vertical in Finland than gaming. So that's our first gaming verticals space will be open next month. Welcome to, um, to come to our office if you enjoy. One more question. Do you work with corporate? Do you, do you work with corporate? And if so, how? Yes, we do. We're working with a lot of uh, uh, large companies. For example, Volkswagen in China. Um, we help them design their new innovation center. We provide a lot of training um, for that company to help use. Innovation is a, a very positive word. Uh, a lot of old traditional company is moving into it. We are helping them with our resource, with our startup in our platform. Not only we plus, but we bring new team from our platform to work with them. That's how we work with large company. I think my time is up. Thank you very much.
Thank you so much. And I'll give it up, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Alan. Thank that you. was great. Thank you.